lounge and son. Welcome back to the comic lounge. My name is Ryan. And today we're going to do exactly what I promised. We're going to continue going through some cross gen comic books. The topic of discussion today was one of my favorite titles of the launch, and it was Sigil by Barbara Kiesel, Ben and Ray Lai, and Will Katana, Quintana. Um, before I get into it, though, if you're subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. We appreciate your support. But if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and join us as we go through a plethora of comic books on this channel. Interviews, artist editions, hardcovers, single issues, all that good stuff. So hit that subscribe, check out the content, and now join me as we go through the first few issues of Sigil. So I figured um, the best way to do this, um, and also to save time, because to do every single issue of every single run of CrossGen would take me, I mean, it'd be a full-time job. So I figure I'll break it down into arcs. Um, you know, maybe take the you know one off where I'll go through a single issue, kind of like I did CrossGen Chronicles. I didn't do that whole run. That one would be a good one to kind of break into separate episodes. But like I said, this was one of my favorites. Uh, Sam was one of my favorite characters. And I love, I love all the characters uh, in this run. But I love how a thing that I really dug that they did you know, after they launched Cross and Chronicles, number one, they immediately, next month, four launches of the first four titles to come from Cross Gen, and each one opened the same way. We have these two characters with glowing orange eyes. They're talking about, this place grows colder. Its energies wane. I'm seeking a solution and eagerly welcome your thoughts. And, you know, they talk about, you know, when it was all set in motion, it was so fascinating in its complexity. It surprised even me. Now things are static, worlds grow cold, and what were once glorious fields of battle lay still and barren. And so what are they going to do? They want to reignite the cycle. And, you know, why look only to the first? Well, there are many worlds open to you, so many people. If you were to step in quietly among them, walk among them, then a subtle touch to add just a small mark of your passage, a sign, your sign. Imagine each world, one soul, marked with the sigil, open to the power. And then he said, why just one? Well, I was thinking in terms of efficiency, the number is unimportant. A small number makes for a clear burden on each, too many, and they let someone else do the work, as we have already seen with the first. So the first are the race of gods, like I had mentioned in Cross and Chronicles. Um, and now what dif what differentiates each issue is we get, this is literally going to be the same first two pages in each one, so I won't go through them in each one, but then we get to the worlds that we're at and we're going to learn why they choose who they choose. Give them no warning, no direction. Let the actions dictate the flare of their sigil. Cause the cross generation. Yes. Power from conflict, energy, creating energy as the new ones work toward their own definition. They serve your needs. And then I can already feel it growing warmer already. Then we're immediately thrust in. We meet Sam. We meet Roya, you know, they're at some space spaceport and, Immediately, they get pulled into this Pseudosaur action. Uh, and it's basically like dogfighting or cockfighting, right? Like, s similar thing, except they can control these, like, miniature dinosaurs through these headsets. And it's a way of gambling. You know, Roya has her own opinions on it. Sam's going in there. And in, the mail in all this going on, we see this guy, Jameric, walk up. And he's kind of hitting on Roya. He's got those orange eyes, like I had mentioned, uh, which is something to pay attention to because it means something. These people that have orange eyes, are they connected to this? We'll have to find out. We see this pseudo sword uh, war going, or battle going on between and Sam wins the thing. And he's like, you know, you remind me of a Saurian I know. Cocky son of a. Thinks he's my match. I call him loser too. And that is basically Sam's arch enemy throughout this run. Then we jump and we meet this, uh, we meet Sultan Ronolo. You know, he's the Sultan on this planet that Sam and Roy are on, uh, on this planet Tanapal. And, you know, he's counting out all the women and there's 12 of his wives. Where's number 13? She's escaped, none, uh, none other than uh, Zanny, who we meet here. And we see all these people, you know, we see these, uh, you know, robots or mechanical warriors or they're just guys in suits and they are there search. We see some of the guards 
and they're looking for you know Zaniati, and they're trying to bring her back to the Sultan. You know, Roy is like, well, yeah, this might mean some real work. Let's do it. And he's like, you know, just one more, one more game. My luck's running hot tonight. And then we meet some of the Saurian warriors, get a nice little, you know, quick fight between Sam and the Saurians. And we see, you know, Zanny come into the mix, Jameric coming in. And he's like, if you can use that, we can get out of here alive. But in this battle, great fight scene too. Love the art. I, you know, I really dig Ray and Ben Lai, who I did not know before this book. This is my introduction to them. And then, you know, Barbara Kiesel's writing on this was love. I love the humor, the action in here that she injects. I love that you immediately, like, know exactly who these characters are, their personalities. It's done really well. And then we get this. So you're already, like, getting attached to Roy and she gets stabbed. And so that's going to lead us into where we saw in Crossing Chronicles where she's kind of in a coma. What happens Zanny blasts this Saurian away with her gun and they are going to make their escape and they run straight to Sam's ship, the bitter luck. He's going to try to save Roya because she's, he's got like a, you know, a medical scanner on there, you know, maybe find some way to fit, to fix her. And this energy that gets, ex that is exploding out of Sam, because as we saw here, he got grabbed with, you know, I kind of passed it over before, but he, the Saurian with orange eyes burns this mark into his chest, but we don't see it until much later, and we'll see it after this. But his energy level of, because he's going through pain, it's glowing red, and he, this explosion goes off. And then we see the mark on his chest. I love this shot, too. They're escaping, and then we see the swirl here, and then this kind of swirl scar on his chest, and he's knocked out. And somebody's talking to him, and who is it? It's Roya through the ship. And then the next few issues sets up a ton, you know, of what's of what's to come. We see one of the first, you can see by the yellow mark, he's he sees what happened on this planet and he's like, "Oh my god, like the concentrated power. Like he's never seen something like this." And now he's on the hunt for him as well. We get, you know, some of these some of these soldiers are looking for him. They're wondering what happened with this blast and he's out in space. He just doesn't understand how Roy is able to talk to him through the ship. He's like, he doesn't get it. He's like, and then he's, you know, beating himself up over it. He's like, I should have had your back. And Roy is like, you know, you snap out of it. The soaring ships are, are strafing again. I knew you, need you in the here and now. And so we're going to get, you know, a bunch of different things all playing out at once. But in the meantime, it's like, where did this dramatic guy come from? And he's like, you know, it's more a sigil than a mark. And again, the orange eyes, right? So he's he's this mysterious guy that came out of nowhere. We see Roya did a background check on him. And also, while looking up her, realizes, you know, she doesn't exist. So Sam's, you know, like, yeah, you know, I got a dead friend, a drifter, and a runaway, and a branded chest. Don't talk to me. I got to go think. And then we meet who he calls Loser. I think it's pronounced Pluserud, I think. Um, and he's like the head of the Saurians. And he's partnered up with this sultan. So we're seeing the, you know, kind of like political intrigue almost, right? Like that dude, the sultan is like all about money and financing, uh, you know, his basically giving his help to the highest bidder. And then we see the guy of the first chasing after Sam and kind of keeping an eye out for him. And all, all Sam has one thing on his mind, though. It's revenge. And then we see, look, now we start to see the way his powers work, right? Like he's he's melting the stuff, but he can reform it so he can like move matter and rework matter, which is, I, I really, I really dig his powers. And I love how each sigil bearer has a different like way that their powers work. And now he's about to, you know, meet up with the Saurians, going to get a, a, a battle between them. Love this. You know, this is perfect for fans of Star Wars you know anything sci-fi i think that uh i love that about, that's what was cool too about the original you know about crossing is that they all played on different genres but they were all connected by this one symbol and that was the sigil you know we get some cool moments we get some a, a lot of good character development and you know the it's cool to know where they end and where they end up as sam's like going through space again we have you know trenin of the first keeping an eye on everything happening. Sam goes out straight into space, uses his matter form to matter melding abilities to kind of create a tether. 
and sneaks straight onto the ship to go fight, as he calls him, a loser. But he gets transported away instantaneously by Trenton, and he's like, you know, I think we should talk. And then so to them, like, they don't, they have no idea where Sam went. Zanny, like, grabs his blaster. You know, she's not the pushover you might think she she could be, like, just being one of the Sultan's wife. She's got spunky personality. And Sam is, like, starting to get the inklings of, like, you know, the first over like kind of spying on these sigil bears because in a way they're kind of scared right because they have a power that's almost stronger than them and you can see how he towers over sam but i love this fight scene between the two of them saurians come aboard the ship they take jameric they take uh zanny and we see that not only do they have the same powers as the first together but they're able to steal power from them. And he steals it from Trent and then he fucking bounces out. He's like, I gotta get out of here. You know, so now we're gonna, you know, over the next couple issues, we're gonna see Sam take over the ship, uh, you know, a more powerful ship than he's ever had. Uh, I remember, you know, this is getting ahead, but eventually, like, he's gonna meld his ships together with Trenton's. Meet, uh, we go to the Starian's home world, see how ruthless they can be. And all the while, I, I love this dynamic too, because like now, because he's on Trenton's ship, he can actually see Roya and see her through holograms. So he's not just hearing her voice, he gets to see her again, exactly how he remembered. And he's going to infiltrate the Sarnian's homeworld to save his ship, because that's where Roya is, that's where Zanny is, and that's where Jameric is. And something else to note is in this final issue of that I'm going to talk about today... This has art by Steve McNiven. That's right. Of Civil War fame. This is some of his earliest work. Doesn't look exactly like what you would get, but later on in his career, post Crossgen. But what's crazy is that, you know, Crossgen had this associate uh, penciler thing, and they would bring in new artists and kind of, you know, mentor them because they had in house artists. You know, Bart Sears was there, and some of the other artists there. I just think it's really cool to kind of look back and see how far Steve McNiven has come. And he'll do some fill-ins, and that's, you know, some, we'll see with other titles, too, where we'll have a fill-in artist, and it's, you know, some of the people in this associate art program. Um, but a lot of great action. Love seeing the way Sam's powers work. I love seeing uh, McNiven's early storytelling. I think he's, you know, you can see kind of the inklings of where he'll eventually go. I love his character, creature designs. Just super fun issue. Sam saves everybody, and we're going to end this on... Comes back to something where, you know, it, from back in his past. He's back at this uh, arena, and he's going to he's gonna fight, you know, Tluzerud straight up in this arena, and it's going to be a battle, you know, that's absolutely insane. I love, again, like, how he's using his powers, and we see, like, this spear that's coming in his chest, and it just melts away. And we end with him going head-to-head -head with Loser. Super fun. Again, the next issue is going to have art by Kevin Sharp. So, again, not the regular creative art team. Or not the regular art team. To be honest with you, I haven't flipped through my books in a while. But I can't even remember if the Lie Brothers are on the issues past issue 5. It's going to be... This is one where I might just do a one-off issue. Because this I remember this issue being really fun to read. Um, and another call out. I love how they have their cross-gen rec you know, recommendations. And, again, we get the you know milestones in the birth of... Um, the cross-gen universe. I, I didn't talk about this in the prior issues, but this is like part four. So they've been talking about and giving behind the scenes on how cross-gen came to be. If you haven't picked these up, funny story too is that now there's a, a sigil omnibus from Marvel because, you know, I'm kind of bearing the lead here, but Marvel owns the rights to the cross-gen comic books for good or for bad. I wish they'd let somebody else kind of take them on and that would actually produce new content and or finish off the runs that never got to come to completion. But, you know, I'm happy that they're putting that content out into the world that, so that people can discover it for the first time, rediscover it. Uh, but go pick up the single issues easy to find. Go pick up that omnibus. If you haven't already checked out the Crossing Chronicles number one episode, check that out. I'm going to be going through probably the entirety of, you know, the cross gen. Uh, titles because they do eventually branch out into other imprints but i just want to talk about all the sigil bears and and all those titles so check it out like fall subscribe hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops and on that note i'm out